All right, you ready for the next comedian? <clears throat> you like funny, right? All right. You gotta give a big Muskegon welcome to our next comedian. Make sure you give him a, a real loud welcome. I wanna hear it. He's uh, been heard on the Bob and Tom show. He's from Chicago, Illinois. Please welcome the mighty Jer Dog. <laughs> Let's hear it for Steve again, everybody, one more time. Keep it going for my co-star tonight, Brian Aldridge. Very funny guy, huh, man? Funny. Shit, I love this stage. I think somewhere there's a mobile home missing its porch, but uh, <laughs> this... <laughs> this will work. Good to be here, man. And this is my problem now, going to the club and trying to get a drink. It seems like any club you go to, you can't just get a regular shot of uh, liquor anymore. It, they, we've got a f these crazy concoctions and mixtures. Oh, here, try this. It's a fuzzy navel or a slippery nipple or a muddy butthole. Come on, man, you'll love it. <laughs> they couldn't even leave tequila alone. They had to put Tabasco sauce in it, call it a prairie fire. Have you guys heard of this drink? It's a shot of tequila with Tabasco sauce mixed in it. It's called a prairie fire. Who the hell thought of this <laughs> Yeah, I like drinking tequila. It just doesn't make my butthole burn enough. Can you <laughs> load me up with some Tabasco sauce there, will ya? I'm not satisfied until I launch Chernobyl out my ass. Come on, man. I do this shot of prairie fire. Bam! <laughs> An hour later, I regain consciousness. My face is in the toilet. My ass is in the sink. Water running down. <laughs> and not only will you throw up when you drink a prairie fire, you will poop like a baby on x lax I'm telling you. It was not a bowel movement. It was a bowel marathon. I'm sitting on the toilet sweating like crazy. People are handing me little cups of Gatorade. Go, chair dog, you're the man. <laughs> they got the toilet paper strung across the door frame. I go running through. <laughs> and here's the thing about tequila, it'll <laughs> won't it? When you get drunk on tequila, you throw it up, you think you're fine. Yeah, I got my second wind. I'll just switch to Jägermeister. <laughs> I go back out in the bar, I start doing shots of Jaeger. The next thing you know, I'm standing there buck ass naked. <laughs> I'm wearing like a pair of socks so I don't hurt my feet. <laughs> Some dude goes, hey, you know what would be hilarious? If you go run around the block like that, man, buck naked, that would be so funny. And you know how when you're drunk, everything sounds like a good goddamn idea? <laughs> It's not, trust me, all right? As a matter of fact, it's a bad idea to run around in public when you're naked and you're drunk and you're a guy and it's cold. That's a bad <laughs> idea. I'm running around. <laughs> Stop on the street corner, there's a statue there. I start peeing on the statue. Yeah, man. <laughs> then my eyes focus and the statue is starting to move. It's like, <laughs> So I look a little bit closer, the statue was wearing a badge. <laughs> now I'm getting my drunk, naked ass beat to the ground by a cop and I can't quit peeing. <laughs> it was like I had Pringles penis. Once I popped, I wouldn't stop. <laughs> I tried putting a kink in the hose, it just sprayed me in the face. <laughs> and that was prairie fire pee. The cop didn't mace me, I did it myself. <laughs> in Iowa, a town called Pella, Iowa, which is where they make Pella windows, if you guys ever heard of those. And uh, the reason why I decided to go to college there was because when I was doing my research, I found out that everybody that lives in the town of Pella, Iowa, they all originally come from the Netherlands. They're all Dutch, and I figured that'd be the perfect place to go to college, because in Holland, prostitution is legal. <laughs> Marijuana is legal. I figured I'd go to college where everybody's Dutch and spend four years of my life getting stoned and laid every day, right? How wrong could I have been? 
There's the people that live in Pella, Iowa, aren't the new cool, let's legalize hash and hookers kind of Dutch. Oh, no, they're the old 1800s, I got a windmill stuck up my ass kind of Dutch. <laughs> Nobody in that town is getting stoned or laid unless you can figure out a way to smoke a tulip or a wooden shoe. <laughs> I drink too much, man. <laughs> I started drinking in college. I went to college for about three years until they kicked me out because I partied too much. I took out a student loan for $20,000, spent the entire wad on alcohol. My parents are pissed. They're like, you wasted My money wasted me. That's <laughs> My family did an intervention on me, too, man, a couple weeks ago. Actually, it was like a month ago. I went to family Christmas, and uh, they all ganged up on me, tried to convince me to quit drinking. And here's the thing that pisses me off. My family used to be the biggest you would ever meet in your life. Now they're all recovering alcoholics, a.k.a. pussies. <laughs> My uncles were so funny when they were drunk, man. They'd piss in grandma's refrigerator. There was always like a tray of brownies labeled adults only, you know what I mean? <laughs> no one in my family parties anymore. I turn 21, I start partying, they all quit. It pissed me off. They're like, we, we recovered. We're not drinking anymore. You shouldn't either. I got to show up at family Christmas drunk just to, because they're so dysfunctional. You know, family Thanksgiving, we're all there at the table. Everyone's, you know, people are cussing each other out. You know, chew with your mouth closed, you big asshole. Don't tell me what to do, you stupid bitch. And those are just the kids. <laughs> you got to get drunk to go over to the family's house. At Jared Dog's place, man. I, last Christmas, I got wasted. I showed up so drunk, I gave the wrong people the wrong presents. <laughs> My wife hated the oven mitts. My grandma loved the chocolate dildo. <laughs> I don't know, man. What else can I tell you guys about me as if that all wasn't enough? Uh, like Steve said, I live in Chicago. I love living in Chicago. It's a real cool city, man. But I didn't grow up there. I uh, grew up in a real small town in the middle of Iowa. Thank you very much. Real small town by the name of Colfax, Iowa. Population 600 people. You guys have heard of white trash, Colfax, and Phil. The mayor has a mullet. And his mullet also has a mullet, which... You got that sub mullet going. Real small high school, 45 students in my graduating class, 20 of them had the same last name. How the hell does that work out, man? I think I hit a little too close to home for some of you. What the hell is wrong with that? You were a real small high school, man. Most exciting thing that ever happened to me when I was in school one year, we had a female gym teacher, and she was a badass. She used to make us play dodge bowling ball. <laughs> I'll work on the wording on that one. I loved the female gym teacher, man. I thought she was hot. One year I snuck into the girl's locker room, I watched her take a shower. I was kind of ashamed of myself because her dick was bigger than mine. Oh. <laughs> What are you going to do, man? <laughs> I got a quick joke for you. This guy walks into a bar. He's got a black guy. The bartender goes, man, what the hell happened to you? Because I got this in church. He goes, church? He goes, yeah, I was sitting behind this lady. She stood up and had this huge wedgie. Me being the guy that I am, I pulled it up for her. She turned around and punched me right in my face. A week later, he shows up. He's got two black guys. The bartender goes, man, what the hell happened to you? He goes, church. He goes, no way. He goes, yep, I was sitting behind the same lady. She stood up and had the same wedgie. Bartender goes, you didn't pull it out, did you? He goes, no, I know she hates it. The guy next to me pulled it out. So I heard him shoved it back in. You <laughs> know what I like to do? I like to take my wife out drinking. Because when she gets drunk, she rapes me, and I like that. <laughs> oh, ladies, don't laugh, because the guys are working on you right now.
<laughs> and I'm always, my wife don't drink a lot. So when I notice she's drinking, I start pumping drinks into her because I want to make sure it's going to happen. And in my head, I'm thinking, this is great. This is awesome. Around midnight, we're going to be getting busy. And every time around midnight, she's over the toilet puking. <laughs> Yeah, I gave her too much to drink. And I'm a good husband. I'm there rubbing her back, trying to get her panties down. <laughs> I wasn't going to let the opportunity go right on by. <laughs> oh, I seen a funny commercial today. I don't know if you guys got it, though. I don't even know if this is going to work. Do you guys got Sealy mattresses? You guys know what Sealy mattresses are? Yeah. Well, back in Rochester, where I come from, they have this commercial where this little boy is jumping up and down on a mattress, and then he jumps over to the Sealy mattress and falls right asleep. And I was watching this commercial and I thought to myself, you know, if Michael Jackson had a Sealy mattress, you know how much money he could have saved on Jesus juice? <laughs> know what I hate when we argue? I don't know if it's just me, but when we argue, I got like this really big fantasy mind. So I always like fantasize bad things happen to her when I'm really mad at her. You guys do that? Like, you don't really mean it, but you just think about it. Oh, I'm terrible. Like, we'll get into an argument, and I, th I think to myself, you know, wouldn't it be great to get a phone call? And on the other end of the phone, there's a guy going, Mr. Brown, we have your wife. It'll cost you $25,000 to get her back. And right then is when I would remember how she said I waste our money on stupid things. <laughs> So this particular time, I'm not going to waste any money. I'm going to tell him, you know something? I need proof you got my wife. I can't just give you 25000 I need proof. Well, what kind of proof do you need? Tell you what, send me her tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Week later, tongue shows up, phone rings. I go, hello? You got the tongue? Yeah, I got the tongue. Well, you know, I got the tongue. What do I want a wife with no tongue for? <laughs> I can hear her in the background going, you son of a bitch. <laughs> This lady gets onto a bus, goes up to the bus driver and does this. He does this. She does this. He does this. She does this. He does this. She does this and gets off the bus. Guy behind what was that all about? He goes, well, she's deaf. She don't talk. That's how I've learned to communicate with her. He goes, well, what could you have gotten out of that conversation? Well, she asked me if we're going uptown. I said, no, we're going downtown. She said, is there a lot of stops? No, we're running straight through. She said, are you going by the dairy farm? No, the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> she said, S I'm on the wrong bus. <laughs> I'm Danny Brown. You guys enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> oh, man. People ask me a lot of questions. They go, why you call yourself Jair Dog? You think you're a gangster? Yeah, that's right, homie. I'm a gangster. <laughs> From Iowa. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd be dishing my chores. And <laughs> going on drive-by plowings. <laughs> be selling corn 20 bucks a gram. <laughs> That's what you call crack corn. Can I get a what, what? <laughs> Iowa, man, I, I don't see anywhere else, you know? Like, the Japanese beetle. Do you guys have that around here at all? The Asian ladybug? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No sh that mutant ladybug, it, it's real tiny and irritating, which is basically how my wife describes me in bed. It, you smash it, it smells like <laughs> Isn't it just like the Japanese to attack us with a creature? <laughs> like, what is this? Some science fiction movie, you know? They send over a mutant ladybug. We get the Americans. What's Al-Qaeda going to do? Send over a giant flying mutated camel turd? <laughs> I wrote that joke when I was on mushrooms. Don't worry about it, folks. That's mine. It was funny at the time. We say things in Iowa. I don't hear any other parts of the country. You guys ever hear this? You're driving past a farm. You can smell the pig in the air. You ever hear anybody go, ooh, we smell that money. <laughs> Have you really heard that? That's why we refer to in Iowa. Apparently turds are currency in Iowa. <laughs> Smell that money. That was so confusing to me when I was a kid. My dad would drive me past a farm. He'd be like, ooh, wee boy, smell that money. I'm like, dad, if that's money I'm smelling, hop over that fence, scoop some up, and buy me that Nintendo I've been wanting. 
That's money I'm smelling. Why are we always broke? Let's just get a cow and feed it chili. Or prairie fires. <laughs> it equals money, then my grandmother must be rich. That's all I gotta say, because she sh more than anybody else I know. Maybe that's why she keeps tissue in her sleeve. I don't know. I don't know if she's eating sulfur or what. It always smells like rotten eggs. My grandmother smells worse than my grandfather, and he's been dead for 10 years, all right? Am I crossing the border? Is that too much? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Chicago's so different than Iowa, though, man. Like, in order to get to the comedy club in Chicago, I have to go through the ghetto. And a lot of people are like, man, doesn't that freak you out? Don't you get scared? Not really, because I grew up in the Iowa version of a ghetto. We just called it a trailer park. <laughs> Very similar to the ghetto, man. In the ghetto, they drink old English. In the trailer park, they drink old Milwaukee. <laughs> Some people are like, what are you talking about? Old Milwaukee's a good beer. Yeah, that's why you keep it hidden in a paper sack when you're drinking it. <laughs> old Milwaukee for the alcoholic on a budget. <laughs> The ghetto doesn't scare me at all, man. The ghetto's just different. Little things are different in the ghetto. You know, I went to a Wendy's in the ghetto. Instead of pigtails, Wendy had cornrows. <laughs> what else, man? I like going back to Iowa, though, man. We got this amusement park in Iowa called Adventureland. And I always like going back to Adventureland because they don't have the stuff they have at, like, Six Flags or Disney World. Adventureland just has all the crap the carnival condemned. <laughs> and that's what makes Adventureland the goddamn adventure. <laughs> you can die any day you go to Adventureland. I got three Purple Hearts the last time I went there. <laughs> And they got all the typical carnival workers. You know, they're missing their teeth, they're on parole, addicted to meth, and they're running the Tilt-A-Whirl, baby. <laughs> they got this one ride called the Space Shot. It cranks you up like five stories in the air. You get to the top, they pull the lever, and it just drops your ass free fall style. I went on that one twice. The first time, because it looked fun. The second time, to fetch my balls from the... <laughs> top of the ride. <laughs> and if you ever go to Adventureland, do not eat the cotton candy. It's just fiberglass insulation. They stick to a toilet paper tube. <laughs> Chicago's just different than Iowa, man. Like, I never experienced road rage until I moved to Chicago. Do you guys get road rage around here at all? <laughs> do you really? How bad can traffic be in Muskegon, man? And you get road rage? Everywhere I go, people get road rage now. I never experienced it until I moved to Chicago. What the hell is road rage in Iowa? Two Amish guys crashing their horse and buggies together? <laughs> A thousand curses upon thee, Jebediah. <laughs> you just ran over my beard. <laughs> road rage. I just don't get it. If you're in a car and someone cuts you off or they're going too slow or whatever, what's the point of screaming at them? They can't even hear you. <laughs> See, that's why I think we scream when we're in the car, because it's easy to talk when you know the other person can't hear you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Only a lunatic does that face to face. Like, if you're in the checkout lane of Walmart, someone's going too slow in front of you, you don't go, move my Where'd you learn to push a cart? <laughs> Try it. Go to Walmart. They'll open up a can of Sam's Choice whoop ass on you. I guarantee you that. Do <laughs> you know why there's so much road rage? Everybody gets road rage, and it's because everybody drives stupid. 
We all do it. We're all guilty of it. It's not our faults because we don't learn how to drive properly in the first place. Driver's ed in high school is a joke. <laughs> I mean, they teach you all the traffic laws. They teach you how to technically operate the vehicle. But they don't teach you how to really drive a car. I'm talking about how to do 70 miles an hour down the highway through construction with the stereo at full blast trying to read your <laughs> quest directions. <laughs> your wife bitching in this ear, baby crying in this ear, cell phone ringing on the dash, 40 ounce in your crotch, burger and fries in each hand, trying to steer with your knee. That's how they need to teach you to drive, man.